Professor Kinis, thank you so much for, uh, for having agreed for this interview and for your precious time that, uh, that you can uh, give for us. Could you give a sort of little introduction into this collection that you have in this wonderful library? Well, you know, uh, a lot of things here in Western Europe have uh, historical roots and can only be really be explained when you look back to history. Yeah. And there is a large history of the university's library here in uh, Louvain, in Leuven. Uh, but uh, it was a quite dramatic history. Uh, and I think it might be useful to say a little bit about it because, um, well, originally there were no uh, faculty libraries. Uh, in the older university, there was uh, originally, uh, there were small collections of professors, for example, or of colleges. And it's only in the course of the centuries that one uh, began to uh, develop one central library of the university, and that was located here in the university halls, which are now the central place in the, in the university. Uh, and by the end of the 18th century, that was a very rich, interesting collection. But then, you know, the 20th century was a very uh, uh, violent century and we were uh, twice uh, uh, suffering uh, w war and twice the, our central library was practically completely destroyed, destroyed including all its books. Uh, so this is a very, uh, has been a very dramatic history, which implies that, uh, let's say, by the middle of the 20th century we had very few uh, early prints, uh, older books, because everything was burned, so to speak. and then. Um, we continuously try to uh, reconstitute uh, uh, the collection, the library, uh, uh, not only the buildings but also uh, the collection of books. And um, uh, there was a one, one specific thing here in Leuven, in Louvain, uh, by the end of the 1960s, as you maybe uh, know, the UN United University was uh, split, uh, uh, was separated into two universities, you can say the Dutch-speaking uh, Flemish University that stayed in Leuven, and that's we, uh, that's us, and the other one that moved about 50 kilometers south to louvain la neuve And there again our library was uh, uh, in a certain sense split in, in two, but at that time we decided something important for the present uh, library. Uh, the university decided to decentralize their uh, libraries and every faculty got its own library and that's the moment when we uh, started this theological faculty uh, library which as you can see is relatively recent the building uh, dates from the early 70s and uh, then we started with our own library but obviously we didn't have that much books uh, and we realized we knew that if we wanted to be a real significant international faculty we needed uh, a library uh, on an international uh, le level with an international quality. And then we decided, and maybe it's good to know that, uh, that uh, we should uh, constitute it on the basis of existing uh, uh, scholarly libraries. And we succeeded in uh, combining two existing libraries, the one from the Flemish Jesuits, which have their uh, study house a few kilometers south from Leuven in Heverle. They agreed to deposit their rich research library here in our library. And the other one was the library of the major seminary of Mechelen, uh, the archdiocese of uh, the Roman Catholic Church. They also agreed that their library was deposited here. And so these were the two cornerstones, if you like, of this library, which immediately made it a, a very valuable research and also heritage collection, because in that uh, diocesan library there were a lot of uh, early prints. So this was the basis of our library, and from then on we continuously uh, by purchasing new books, but also by receiving our uh, uh, collections of libraries, for example, from religious orders and so, we, we made sure that our uh, library increased uh, also in number. So as uh, for the moment we think that we estimate that we have about 1,300,000 books in this library, which actually makes it one of the largest and we think also one of the richest theological libraries in the world. Yeah. And certainly, uh, as far as the, the research uh, level is concerned, I think we, we uh, are able to keep uh, the, the standards that were set by these uh, existing earlier libraries like that of uh, uh, the Flemish Jesuits. So we have a very uh, internationally oriented library that covers all the areas of theology, including uh, uh, disciplines that are connected with it. You mentioned that uh, your library is largely constituted of two sources. Jesuit collection yeah. and uh, the uh, seminar of Lem yeah. uh, Mechelen. 
uh, well, it is also very well known fact that there are uh, there were many monasteries around Leuven, yeah. uh, the filials of the yeah. larger orders who send their students yeah. to study here in Leuven, especially in this faculty. Yeah. Uh, since those, the majority of those uh, monasteries almost dying out, uh, yeah. I suppose uh, part of those collections, uh, I would think the first one, Abbey of the Park, yeah. uh, had partially ended up here. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, of course, uh, you, uh, as you say, uh, most, uh, the most uh, certainly important religious orders had already for centuries their own study centers over here. Eh? Yeah. Uh, even, uh, even apart from the university, most of the time they had a kind of, they were incorporated yeah. in the university, but they had their own libraries, for example. And we agreed already with uh, some of them that they also deposit uh, their collections over here in our library or that they uh, donated it to, to us. So we have a very rich collection of the Franciscans, for example, uh, uh, of, of the libraries of the Franciscans uh, uh, here in, in the, the Friars Minor, uh, here in, in Leuven, of the Dominicans and so on, and so of my, also of many more recent religious congregations, which like, like the Montfortans and so on, which sometimes has very interesting uh, smaller collections, but very rich collections of libraries. So this is uh, what happened the past decades, and that's uh, how we were able to uh, get this large collection. Eh? That, well, so th this is one of the of the major reasons why we, why we could uh, uh, constitute this collection. Also, as far as the early prints are concerned, yeah. because obviously we are a research library first of all. So we try to purchase new publications, but through these uh, kind of donations and. Uh, uh, depot giving from uh, uh, existing collections, we have, I think, about 180,000 early prints. Uh, and early prints, that is uh, up uh, to the beginning of the 19th century, that's considered to be early prints. But this is, uh, for our standards, a very large collection, it's one of the largest in Belgium, I think, yeah, these 180,000 early printings. Uh, and, and this is, of course, uh, on, this was only possible to, to uh, assemble them by uh, taking over uh, existing libraries. We couldn't purchase that ourselves, of course. So in that sense, uh, we um, consider this collection also, and this is another function, we are not only a research library, but we are also a heritage library. We are recognized by the Flemish government as an heritage library, um, which uh, means that we are preserving uh, if you like, the religious theological heritage of our country. That's also part of our, uh, of our functions. And I think, well, well, this is a very important one, and we are also very, pr very proud that we are able to do that. Yeah. Professor, what are the principles of the acquisition of your uh, yeah. sources? Um, well, we have a, what one calls a, a collection plan. Eh? Yeah. Uh, so you try to follow a, a certain uh, procedures if you um, uh, 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 make your collection. And the, first of all, uh, we try to be a, a research library, almost what we consider at the top level. Eh? Mm. Uh, that means that uh, you have certain standards that you, uh, in certain areas on, uh, of research on which we are focusing, we are practically purchase, try to purchase everything. <laughs> Uh, of course, that's not possible, mm -hmm. uh, but that means, for example, you can imagine that we uh, uh, purchase uh, normally everything that is published in, of course, Dutch, uh, but it's uh, small, yeah. but English, French, German, uh, quite some uh, pub uh, publication in Spanish and in Italian, in addition, of course, to the uh, traditional classical languages in mm -hmm. theology, that's uh, Hebrew, uh, Greek, Latin, and so, and uh, s sometimes, incidentally, also uh, still in other languages. That's an example to show that we try to keep to the, the level of what you can consider in, well, we think we, we can still do that, uh, a, a top level uh, research library in theology. I think we succeed, we are still succeeding in doing that. Um, of course, that's not so in all areas of uh, theological research. That would be practically impossible, but we, are to, we think we can quite well uh, cover the uh, entire area. And of course, this also includes uh, an important communication, communication medium in the theology, like in all other uh, uh, sciences. That's uh, everything that has to do with uh, periodicals, uh, magazines, and even journals. And so, of course, we have all, also thousands of subscriptions to the most important and other uh, uh, periodicals in theology and, and uh, areas that, that are surrounding that. The Aaron Kerton 
uh, between the capitalist and the and the communist uh, uh, walls yes. has fallen down. Yeah. And it is fortunate that uh, the uh, now it's all open and more to eat uh, in Russia and the Orthodox countries. Now theology is is thrown, uh, thrilling, and uh, of course there are many publications done. Uh, there are peri pe periodicals published. Yeah. Uh, what is the policy of your library towards what is happening there? Well, uh, of course, uh, as you mentioned, this change uh, also in, in the mobility, I would say, and the, 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 the possibility to communicate in, in Europe as a whole, clearly had consequences for our faculty. Uh, 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 gradually, we received more and more students coming from, let's say, Central and Eastern Europe. And this, we consider a very also enriching uh, element in the way we are uh, doing theology. Our Western approach, let's say, is complemented or enriched by the, the, the Eastern uh, uh, tradition, uh, for example, of Christianity. And obviously, then you also have to provide, uh, then we are also uh, interested in uh, adding a little bit up to, to the collection you have, because as you can imagine, this was not our, our focus, uh, uh, Eastern uh, European uh, theology. We knew it uh, not well. Uh, the language is uh, uh, a, a, a problem, if you like, because very few, if any people here, for example, understand Russian or another. Uh, Eastern European language uh, like Polish or uh, I don't know and and therefore we have a beginning I think we have a basic collection and you sh uh, should be able to correct me mm -hmm. uh, but reg with regard to uh, let's see Eastern uh, European uh, Christian theology but it's obvious that we still could uh, enlarge that we have a kind of policy also a very concrete policy in that sense that we sometimes we are trying to upgrade our collection uh, at the moment that, for example, a, a, a student or a researcher starts a doctoral work on a certain subject. Yes. And I could imagine, suppose that the student over here, uh, a Russian student or, or another student who uh, knows Russian wants to make a, a doctoral dissertation on the theology of a certain Russian theologian that we decide, this is our policy in general, for example, to, to purchase the mm -hmm the publications of this author yeah. also in Russian. Yeah. We wouldn't do it spontaneously for the obvious reason that we have, uh, well, that we are not uh, acquainted enough with, with the, 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 the research area to do that on our own initiative. Yeah? But that's also the way how we try to uh, uh, fill high, uh, you, you can say, certain uh, lacks of, uh, in the collection. So the, uh, at the occasion of a, a specific research, make sure that you complete it. Yes. And of course, this is something we certainly still have to do uh, with regard to the, the uh, everything that is published in, uh, in, uh, in e Eastern Christendom, let's say, but I think we can say that for the last 10 years, for example, uh, we uh, certainly focused on, on paying more and more attention mm -hmm. to that area, precisely because it al is also very enriching for us. And secondly, because we have quite a, a number of students uh, coming from uh, Eastern Europe and Central Europe who are studying here, and, and then obviously you are more and more interested in the area, I think. Uh, professor, you mentioned uh, that um, that there were several moments of devastation of yeah. the library uh, in your faculty and in the university. Uh, this is also the case with the majority of theological libraries in Russia. Yeah. Uh, for many yeah. reasons, you know, burned, yeah. stolen, yeah. disregarded. Uh, basically, almost everything has gone even with the most impressive collections like uh, the place where we come from, Moscow uh, Theological Academy. Uh, what kind of uh, tips could you give to the people who are working hard uh, trying to build up to do something what you already achieved? Well, uh, of course, there's one important thing. You need the means uh, to uh, build up your collection. Uh, it depends also on your financial means. Uh, yeah. I've, uh, first of all, spontaneously, I would say, make sure that you preserve very well what you still have. Uh, that's already an important thing. Uh, yeah. uh, and then I think uh, it, it's possible that uh, if you look around and if you look what uh, that you, it would be able to to find uh, here and there still. Uh, 
collections that, that, uh, that could be centralized, so to speak. What we did here uh, under quite different conditions, of course, uh, is that, that we became a large library because uh, we were able to uh, centralize uh, existing libraries uh, who were not devastated mm. uh, uh, into one library. Uh, but of course, uh, that's maybe only gradually po possible, but this is a possible way that you can do. And for the rest, I would say, certainly now with the electronic means, uh, with the internet, uh, it is possible already to get uh, access to a lot of sources through the internet. Uh, of course, this is also something that you cannot get for granted and you have to pay for it also. Mm -hmm. But this would be, I think, a an, an quick way uh, to, to get uh, the information also in theology that, that you need to, 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 uh, to, uh, to be able to, uh, to study theology well. So in other words, also in theology, more and more uh, periodicals, for example, are available online. Yeah. Uh, even books, uh, but this is already something else. Uh, but I would say th this is also a way uh, to quickly uh, make a collection that is w w uh, really uh, extensive enough uh, uh, as a basic theological library. Uh, that's the, the, the first thing you can do. Uh, and f for the rest, I, I think, well, yeah, uh, patiently building up uh, a library, uh, that's the only thing you can do, I think. Uh, I also noticed also that, that uh, well, Things are changing also in this sense. You can also scan quite some text and so forth. So in that sense, uh, maybe with, with uh, some uh, uh, elementary work of yeah. copying text that you, that you consider important, you can build up already something. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, most probably I think, to <laughs> the, only reason, the only way to be sure that you can develop a serious collection is that you need the, the funding for it and you need mm -hmm. the means to, to, to uh, finance it probably this is uh, something you can uh, you in one way or another you have to provide i would say and uh, well in this respect who is providing for for their funding for this for this library well uh, there, yeah there is uh, there are various sources uh, we have there is also some work we have to do uh, ourselves uh, there is a, uh, some basic uh, financing uh, yearly by the university we have also certain uh, agreements uh, with, uh, well, uh, that's also coming from the past with uh, religious uh, orders that that uh, that are f uh, that. Um, let's put, let me put it this way: we were able, in the course of time, to create a certain fund uh, 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 from, from which we can uh, make use as part of our financing. Uh, this, uh, but uh, uh, also the faculty, and this is rather exceptional. Uh, um, spends quite an ex extensive part of its uh, budget uh, in purchasing books for the library. Uh, we have also research projects, as you know, uh, that are uh, pr provided by the state, by the government, and uh, part of these uh, projects include also the, the means to, to purchase books. And uh, we agreed with, with uh, the, the, the staff here that, that uh, part, uh, normally these, these books of the or the majority of these books that you purchase in the, in the context of a project are uh, for the library. Eh? So that's why, uh, that's how we, by various means, uh, get the, the, the funding uh, to, uh, together that enables us to, uh, to finance uh, this library. Of course, you know, uh, in uh, this system over here, Everything that has to do with personnel and with buildings is financed by the state eh? uh, yeah. uh, or by uh, the university, eh, which is funded by the state. And, and therefore, uh, the, the basic uh, equipment uh, is, is, is present, and that's an important thing to know. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, yeah. and the last question, yeah. Professor. Um, this library is run by the professionals. Yeah. You, in the first place, as an academic who knows what the value of the stuff is, but also all the people who work with you, uh, they are not just uh, people like uh, doing fun or uh, doing like for hobbies, but those yeah. people who studied it for years and who know what their, what it's called, their, their library science is. Could you tell us more about this, since this science is very much underscored in Eastern Europe? Yeah, well, um, we have various people working over here. 
a, a large number have a, a university degree. But don't forget, you also need other people who are very important uh, for running a library. Eh? Even we have also uh, uh, people who are coming to work here free, eh? uh, if you like, as you said, like a, uh, as a hobby, eh? to, to do the, the elementary things. But of course, you need specialists. We have, uh, and over here it is possible, for example, that you have a university degree and that with some additional postgraduate study you can have uh, a specialization in library sciences. And that's what uh, we have, for, for example, quite some people over here, they know enough uh, uh, about theology to be able to, to, to make sure that the collection, as far as content is concerned, is, is very well done. But as we are also an heritage library, we are also working with early printings and ancient books. And we have also a few people who have specialized uh, in uh, dealing with ancient books. Right? And that means, first of all, it's not uh, that easy to... Uh, to uh, catalog and to describe uh, th these kinds of books, for example. And we have a few people over here who are specialized in it. Sometimes these are historians who did these additional studies in uh, library sciences. And then, of course, we ha there are also a few people uh, over here uh, who are uh, um, specialists in, in book restoration and things like that. But this we cannot uh, organize ourselves or finance ourselves, but this is on the level of the university. So the university library, uh, which we are part in a certain sense of the university library, that's the, co the, collect the, uh, the combination of all the libraries. There are a few people who are really top specialists in, in the uh, conservation and the restoration of books, of uh, uh, ancient books. And we can make use, uh, we can uh, uh, profit from their expertise to, to help us uh, uh, as far as that level is concerned. But of course, this is also absolutely necessary that you pay attention to that eh, if you really want to have a top university. But in that sense, there is a, uh, a little bit of difference. On, on the one hand, uh, if you have a, a collection of ancient books, which uh, requires special, uh, specialized treatment, and on the other hand, a research library, uh, which needs the, 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 the expertise of, of, of a specialist in the area of research. Eh, so, but we try to combine both. But normally, uh, it's not that easy to, to uh, 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 organize that all by yourself and in that sense we are also, you should also not forget, we are also part of the larger university library uh, which enables us uh, sometimes for special occasions to uh, also to make use of uh, other expertise than, than the one we have. But again, uh, it is absolutely necessary that you have, have people to know uh, how to work there and we see also here that more and more we uh, have to make use uh, uh, of to appoint people with a higher degree of, uh, for example, also if only in the ICT uh, issue, uh, uh, more and more you make use of databases and so on. You need people who are uh, expertise in that. Uh, and in that sense, uh, a library is much more than buying a book, uh, uh, writing down the title and put it in the, in the, in the shelf. It's, it's, it's becoming quite specialized more and more. Okay. And therefore, the, the people who are, so to speak, on the top of it are not uh, most of the time the, the ones who are best, best uh, informed uh, about the details, but they should have a, uh, remained, uh, keep a, a certain view on the, on the total, uh, totality of what's happening over here. Absolutely. Professor, thank you very Which much for your, for your explanation and all those answers. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, for